Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is the day everyone has been waiting for. It is my 1K Q&A video. It is the first Q&A video I have done here on YouTube. I've been waiting specifically to hit a thousand subscribers to do this video as part of my 1K giveaway. So at the end of the video, I will also be announcing who won each of the prizes. So I have with me today, Phoenix. You guys really don't get to see Phoenix that often um, in my videos, but I decided today I would take her out. So Phoenix will be joining us for this video. So I have my laptop right here with all of the questions on it. So if you see me looking over it, that is why. Also, I really appreciate everyone that participated. I got so many questions, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to answer all of them in this video, but there were a lot of repeat questions. So odds are your question will most likely get answered, but I did get a lot of questions. So I really appreciate everyone taking part in the giveaway. And it was just super excited. I'm super excited to go through all these questions. Also, disclaimer, if I say anyone's names wrong, I am incredibly sorry. I try really hard to say people's names right since mine is always pronounced wrong. But, I mean, I, I'm trying. I'm trying my best, okay? I'm gonna try my best. So without further ado, let's get into those questions. So my first questions are from Dainty Dinosaurs. Um, and she asked me, who is my biggest inspiration and role model? And how do you manage to edit your videos in a timely manner? So we're talking about like animal inspiration. Um, I feel like I have a pretty general like animal lover answer and that would be Steve Irwin. I don't think that many 90s kids grew up not watching Crocodile Hunter and didn't know who Steve Irwin was. So he was for sure a big inspiration. Of course now, Bindi and Rob are also huge inspirations and I believe Steve Irwin would be extremely proud of them. And I love watching their journeys, watching what they're up to. And I think they're just such an inspiration to conservation and to zoos everywhere. So basically the Irwin family. <laughs> And then, I mean, I've got my skating side and skaters that I've always looked up to. I mean, Ashley Wagner is pretty big, but before Ashley Wagner, um, Sasha Cohen, a lot of people know who Sasha Cohen is. And Sasha Cohen has always been one of my favorite figure skaters. I've always looked up to Sasha Cohen. I've wanted to be Sasha Cohen. I've wanted Sasha Cohen's flexibility. So Sasha Cohen is a big inspiration as far as skating goes. Um, so it's kind of like my two sides. I've got my animal side and my skating side. So they're kind of my two biggest inspirations that have played a part in my life. And then how do I manage to edit my videos in a timely manner? Um, so if I have a day where I can just film videos, I'll usually film at least two, sometimes three. Um, that way I have multiple videos that I can be working on. And I actually film on my phone. So I do all my basic edits in iMovie right on my iPhone. And then I kind of do like something super complicated. So I edit in iMovie on my phone. I transfer it to, or I upload it to my Google Drive so I can download it on my laptop from Google Drive. And then I bring it into Adobe Premiere um, to do all of my more complicated edits, add in music, add in effects, stuff like that. And then I upload it to YouTube. So I try to be working on multiple videos at once. Um, that way when I have one out and I upload it to YouTube and I make it live, I already have other videos that are in the process of being edited. So I try to always have quite a few going at once. Um, that way I'm never sitting around waiting for a video to be filmed. I always, if I have downtime, have a video to be working on. So I got this question a lot, but this one in particular came from Dayanara Fusto. Um, and they asked me, how much money do you spend in a month for your reptiles? So I get this question a lot. Um, or I got this question a lot for this Q and A was how much money I spend on my animals. Off the top of my head, I don't really know. I'm gonna be completely honest. I really don't feel like I spend very much on them. Um, you know, it's all about thrifting, buying secondhand. Uh, most of my enclosures I got used or for free off of Craigslist and Facebook. And then for food, I breed a lot of my insects. Uh, I buy from dubioroaches.com because I feel like they have the best prices. So I kind of, I, 
I searched for the best prices. And then I buy my mice locally at an expo so I don't have to pay shipping for those. Um, and I buy a six month supply at a time and keep them in my freezer uh, because every six months is the expo. So I stock up and then come the end of the six months, I stock up again. So really I don't have to spend a whole lot. Um, but maybe I will actually track it and I'll write it all down and make a separate video um, since so many people are curious on how much I actually spend on my reptiles. So Exotic Marvel Reptiles asked me, are you getting more reptiles? If so, what would your top five be? And I actually had someone else ask me um, when I was going to stop getting new reptiles and just focus on the ones that I have. And so to answer both those questions, I'm currently on pause. I'm not looking for more animals. You guys know I just moved. I just started a new job. So I'm just settling into my new life with the animals that I already have. I'm not really on the lookout for new animals. I'm currently not doing education programs since I just moved to a new area and I am doing education for work um, at the zoo. So that's on pause for the moment while I'm settling in and just kind of figuring out my life right now. Um, so I'm not actively looking for new animals right now. I'm in a one bedroom, one bathroom apartment and my landlords require that I get permission from them before bringing new animals in because they waived their no animal policy for my animals. And I'm very grateful. I was very lucky that they did that for me. So um, I'm not actively looking for new animals right now. Um, and I'm not sure that I will be for a little while. There are some that I would like to get for education programs. Um, so I will be keeping my eye out for those in the upcoming near future. But at the moment, I am not looking for more animals. Um, and the other half of his question was, what would be your top five animals to get um, if you were getting more reptiles? So I guess it won't be like my dream reptiles. It'd be more like legitimately what would my top five be that I'm looking to get. Um, and those would mainly be lizards for education programs because right now Arcadius is my only one. I would like a blue tongue skink and a gecko that I can use for education. So there's two, three more. Um, I'd like another big boa because big snakes are very popular when it comes to education programs and birthday parties and Kronk is my only one. So I would like to have a backup or a second or a um, fallback, a understudy, that's the word. I would like an understudy for Kronk. So whether that be adopting a red tail boa or some other big boa, um, that would be something else I'd consider. So there's three. Um, four, I would really like another ball python because Snicket is my only one. And now that I've had Snicket, I've learned that I actually really do like ball pythons. Um, and there are several other morphs that I really like to have. Um, and then five, one more. I would really like another chameleon. You guys know I love chameleons. I waited 10 years to get a chameleon. So that's Eugene. You can see Eugene right there, um, his enclosure. So I'd really like to get another chameleon, um, probably a panther chameleon, but that would definitely not be for a while. I'd want to be out of this apartment and in a bigger place um, with more room and whatnot. So that wouldn't be for a while. Owen Tice asked, are there any reptiles you wouldn't personally keep or you feel shouldn't be kept in captivity? So this one is kind of a hard one because there are quite a few reptiles I feel like that I wouldn't personally keep and I feel like a lot of people shouldn't keep like the 99% like of people should not keep. However, there are people that could keep these animals no problem and that would do it right. Um, but this is mainly large monitors, venomous species, um, really large snakes like Burmese pythons, anacondas, um, and like crocodiles and alligators kind of left legal in some places. None of that is legal here in New York and for good reason. Um, I personally, like that. that's a lot of room. They need a lot of room. I feel like a lot of people would not provide that room. And so I feel like the vast majority of the population should not own these species, but I'm not gonna say they shouldn't be kept as pets because there are some people that have them and that do it right and absolutely love keeping them. 
So I feel like there's not really anything that I can say really shouldn't be kept in captivity. Um, but there are things I personally would not keep and I think most people should not keep, like those animals. Um, and I want to add iguanas to that list. Because, you know, I have an iguana, I love him. Um, but they do require many things. So the next one is from Alley Cat. And she asked, when did you start really getting into reptiles? And how did you support your animals money-wise if you had them before you could get a job? So I've always kind of really been into reptiles. I've always liked them. Um, I actually lived in South Carolina, so I went to the Riverbank Zoo a lot growing up. If you guys haven't been there, I definitely recommend checking it out because it was an amazing zoo over a decade ago when I lived there. Um, so I can only imagine how much they have changed since then for the better. And they were already like miles ahead of most zoos way back in the day. So they were an amazing zoo, but they had an amazing reptile like building. Uh, I think it was called the Ark. So it's like the aquarium and reptiles and amphibians. Um, and it was just amazing. I loved going through and looking at all of the snakes, all the lizards, mainly all of the snakes. I love the snakes, <laughs> but I just, it was one of my favorite parts of the zoo. Um, I never really considered reptiles a top thing for me though. Like I, I love them. I loved going looking at them. And then my junior and senior year of high school, I was in IB biology and my biology teacher had a leopard gecko in the classroom. And I really liked him. And that's when I decided like I wanted a lizard. So, I mean, Tangled had already come out. I wanted a chameleon, but I knew that chameleons weren't a beginner animal. So that was something, you know, I was gonna hold off on. I mean, I put it on my Christmas list, but we did agree it was a more advanced reptile that I wouldn't get until I already had experience with some other reptiles. So I had leopard gecko and bearded dragon on my Christmas list. My parents were all set to get me a bearded dragon for Christmas. Um, and then they found out that I couldn't have a reptile on campus in college. Uh, so they quickly, nixed that plan and got me a laptop instead so I could take it to college. Um, and then the next summer, we were in Vermont visiting family and I went into Petco, or yeah, it was Petco, and they had a leopard gecko up for adoption. And so we agreed that we could get it and it would be the family gecko. So it wouldn't be my gecko, it'd be a family gecko. So everyone would take care of it. That way when I went to college, they weren't taking care of my gecko, They it was just another family pet. So I really, I didn't have to financially support him because he was a family pet. Um, but even if I had to, I did have a job at the time. I worked at one of our local skating rinks and I was a skating coach. So I did have money coming in, um, but I've just been very fortunate to always have been either a skating coach or a coach's aide. So I've kind of always, had that job since like long before I could actually get a job. Sassy Guadarrama asks, how do you feel about moving on your own with your reptiles? So I was really excited to have my own place and to have tons of room for all my animals because you guys know I lived at home with my parents. All of my animals were in my one bedroom along with my bed and my furniture and everything. And it was really exciting. It was a little tough the first day when everyone left because my parents and my boyfriend did move me down and so when they left it kind of hit me that I was in this new place all alone I had no one to hang out with down here because I hadn't made any friends I hadn't started work yet I had no one to hang out with um, so it was it was a little upsetting the very first day um, so I ended up just going to Walmart and walking around because being here just made me feel kind of lonely and upset. Um, so I went to Walmart, got some goodies, um, and by the next day I was fine. So it was just the initial thought that I was kind of here alone now. Uh, but now I've been at my job for a week as of tomorrow, and I'm, I mean, I'm doing totally fine. My home is only three hours away. The only problem is I can't really go home because I haven't found anyone to watch my animals yet, but they can easily come and see me should I have time off 
um because like i said it's only three hours away um so kel Volkowski and emily elizabeth both asked me basically um what is your non-reptile dream pet and would you get anything besides reptiles hence something fluffy so i'm really not into pets that have fur so like your typical rats mice guinea pigs ferrets um all that i really am not interested in owning them the only thing i think i'd ever really get with fur is a dog i would like a dog um, that obviously will not happen for quite a while. As far as dogs go, my dream dog is a Blue Merle Australian Shepherd. That would be my absolute like dream dog. I also really love Dalmatians, but I don't think I'll ever be able to own one just because they are so high strung and high maintenance and working at a zoo, I'm not going to be able to be home enough to really be able to <laughs> let this dog burn up energy. So I don't think a Dalmatian will ever really be in the cards for me, but I do absolutely love them. So I really like this question. Meg's Darling Zoo asked, if you were on death row, what would you want your last meal to be? So this one's kind of tough. So there's a couple of ways I could go with this one. One being homemade tacos, because I absolutely love tacos, specifically homemade tacos. I mean, Moe's is life, but I would take homemade tacos over Moe's, not gonna lie. But then on the other end of that is Chick-fil-A. And I already don't get Chick-fil-A very much because there's not many up here. So my last meal would probably have to be a Chick-fil-A nugget with waffle fries and a frosted lemonade. So this next one I actually had a lot of people ask and I'm honestly not really surprised to see this question. Um, a lot of people ask me, how do you think you're going to manage taking care of all of your animals now that you're working and out on your own? And naturally, Yana actually added in uh, YouTube. How are you gonna do all that and YouTube? So it's actually been really easy for me. Um, I actually think it was harder when I was at home taking care of all 13 animals and working, and I only worked part-time at the nature center. Um, but, I think what made it really hard was that I was upstairs, all my animals were upstairs, and the kitchen was downstairs, which is where I prepped all the food. And I had a hard time getting up in the morning and would sleep in and then be running around like crazy trying to figure out how to get everything done I needed to in the morning. And I also didn't really utilize my time well. Um, I didn't prepare for things. So since moving in, I have tried to be much better and more responsible with my lifestyle. So budgeting, meal prepping, um, so this includes meal prepping for my animals. So I meal prep Tansy and Arcadius's food. So every morning I just go to the fridge, pull out the Tupperware, dump it in their food dish and I'm good to go. Um, the other lizards primarily eat bugs, so I either just quickly go over to my bug bins, put a bunch of bugs in a cup and go around and divvy it up. Or if I'm gonna give them a treat like mealworms or something, um, I can pull those in at you before, stick them in the fridge, and then they're already ready to go the next day and I just put them in their dishes. And then all of my animals are on timers, so I don't have to worry about turning on and off any lights. As far as the animals go, it's not that bad. I spot clean. As soon as I see any poop, I spot clean it. Um, so their enclosures for the most part stay pretty clean. Um, when I do a deep clean, I only do like two or three enclosures a day. So I will not do a deep clean and do like all of my enclosures in one day because that would take my whole day. Um, I plan and I do like a couple enclosures and then do what I need to do for the day. Um, so I space it out a little bit so it doesn't become overwhelming. Um, so it's just a lot of planning, prepping, doing things ahead of time and doing things to help myself. I mean, talking about YouTube, um, YouTube's not really a job for me. I try to get one video out a week, which is totally, totally doable. And it's actually funny because everyone's worried about how I'm gonna balance my time with animals, a job, and YouTube. Um, but everyone forgets that I also figure skate. 
so I do have that also that I do. So Jen's Pets asks, if you could bring back any extinct species, what would it be? Um, so I'm probably going to go with the Spix Macaw. So it's not completely, completely extinct, but it is extinct in the wild, which is absolutely heartbreaking. Um, blue macaws are my absolute favorite, and I don't mean like the actual species blue macaw, I mean like macaws that are blue are my favorite. Um, so I was absolutely heartbroken by the news of them being extinct in the wild. Um, but if we're going further back like dinosaurs, then um, pterodactyls, I love pterodactyls. So Julie Doherty asks me where I purchase my frozen mice from, and like I said earlier, I do get them at a local expo twice a year. Um, so they are people kind of local to me that do breed mice for the purpose of being feeders and they freeze them. So every six months I do a bulk order and I pick it up at the expo. So um, I've gotten a lot of questions about zoos and zookeeping and my job at the zoo. So I'm actually going to do a separate Q&A um, in a little while specifically for zoo questions and zookeeping questions. You can ask me about my job, ask me about zookeeping in general, ask me about interviews, ask me about college, ask me about volunteering and interning, whatever you want to ask me that's related to zookeeping or my experiences, um, then that's what that video will be for. That way I don't take up time in this video um, talking about all that because I will go on and on and on and on and this video already looks like it's going to be kind of long. Um, but Stephen Explodes did ask me, are there any jobs at zoos that don't require a degree or can you volunteer at a zoo? Um, yes, you can volunteer at a zoo. You have to look at your local zoo and see what they might have. Um, look into becoming a docent. Um, if you're younger, some zoos will have like a zoo crew, junior zoo crew, um, other volunteer opportunities for younger teenagers or um, like preteens, stuff like that. Um, so you just have to look and see what your local zoo has. Um, it's hard to say because most zoos do require a degree only because the positions are so sought after and it's so competitive that requiring a degree really picks apart or picks out the people that want it really bad and will do anything to get it versus the people that just think they want to work with animals, um, but they aren't willing to go through the money and the time and the expense to get a degree so that they can do that. Um, however, I have seen people get jobs at zoos without having to go through college, and that just comes down to experience. So as long as you can get experience, you know, you can try. Experience ultimately is what they look at and what is the most important thing. Uh, I've got a lot of questions about moving, but Shannon, exotic pets, asked me which pet was the hardest to move with. I'll be completely honest, none of my pets were really hard to move, like in the sense of the animal themselves. The hard part were, were the enclosures. Um, so mainly Arcadius's enclosure um, is kind of hard to move. I mean, we have it on wheels, we can carry it. Uh, it just takes quite a few people to carry. And if you have a narrow staircase or any kind of turns in the staircase, um, it, can, it can be difficult. Um, and Kronk's enclosure, his 4x2, uh, is actually not that light. It looks like it could be kind of light. That sucker is heavy. So um, those are kind of pain in the butt to move with and my big reptile shelves that most of my enclosures go on. Um, cause we had to take that apart and then put it back together when we got here. So really it wasn't the animals that were hard to move, it was all of the enclosures in the shelf. Um, so Ashley F asked, what made you start having isopods? So I definitely want to get into bioactive enclosures in the near future. And then I'm not going to lie, um, I've seen a lot of people make just some side cash from breeding isopods. So I'm like, you know what, I like these isopods and there's so many cool looking isopods, so many different kinds. Um, so just having them for the sake of having them and to look at is actually something I really enjoy. I do like to just sit in front of the bins and watch them crawl around, um, trying to collect and buy ones that are super unique and fun looking. Um, so it's all just, it's all just really fun. Um, so Corey Harris asks, what camera should I use for a YouTube channel? Um, what animal shows did you watch as a kid? And what is your dream animal to work with? 
So I'm not a good person to ask about the camera for YouTube because I film on my iPhone. I started this channel on my Nikon P600 because I thought, you know, it's a DSLR, it was an expensive, it was an expensive camera, so it should do really good. And I actually, I absolutely hated the quality on it. Um, that might be different if I had something like a ring light or a legitimate lighting setup. Um, but I've just been filming with natural light, which just did not work well with that camera. So I've been using my iPhone ever since. Um, animal shows, obviously I watched Crocodile Hunter, I mean who didn't. Um, Pet Stars was another big one for me, I always watched Pet Stars. Uh, animal Cops, It's Me or the Dog, um, those are kind of my main ones. And then my dream animal to work with would be a Grand Cayman Iguana. Um, so I have said before that Grand Caymans are kind of one of my favorite reptiles or my favorite reptile. Um, I'd love to be able to work with them and help with conservation. Also Komodo dragons. I would love to work with a Komodo dragon. For non-reptiles, meerkats and red pandas because they're my favorite animals. Ryan Chadwick asks if you could move anywhere in the US, where would it be and why? Um, probably Tennessee. Chelsea Brandt asks, could you break into the steps starting from school to now how you got into conservation and zookeeping? Um, so I'm not going to go too in depth with that because like I said, I'll do a whole other video on, I'll do several videos on that. I'll talk about, you know, my experience, what I did, um, tips for you guys, a and a So I will cover that in the very, very, very near future. Um, but that would take a lot of time in this video and I want to get through lots of questions. Um, so, I mean, I will say a lot of people ask me, like Rush Go Hard also asked me, how did you start your journey into wildlife conservation? So conservation has something I think I've always been interested in because I grew up literally going to the zoo all the time. Like that's literally, that was my childhood, was going to the zoo all of the time. And Riverbanks was so active in conservation work that, you know, you just, you grow up hearing like these animals are going extinct. This is what's happening to these animals in the wild and it's human's fault. And this is what we can do to fix that and what we can do to change it. And I mean, when you grow up and you're, I mean, when you're really little and you hear people telling you like, this is what's happening to these animals and it's because of us and there's things we can do to change that. You know, you kind of, you are just like, why? Why, <laughs> why is this happening? Why are humans doing this? Um, so you kind of just grow up wanting to make a difference and wanting to make a change. So that's kind of what happened to me. I mean, I've been told about conservation and um, animals being endangered from a very young age. So it always just kind of stuck with me and was something I've always been interested in and passionate about. So Nicole P asks, what made you start a YouTube channel? What species of isopods do you like the most? So I started my YouTube channel when I only had Phoenix and Arcadius and I mainly started it to talk about iguanas because I feel like there's not a lot of people on YouTube with iguanas that talk about iguanas. Especially any of the like, bigger pet YouTubers, um, I feel like nobody really has iguanas and iguanas like I said are just one of those animals that you really have to be dedicated and ready to own and I feel like there's not enough people really voicing that in places that people are listening and YouTube has become a big platform. It's a place that a lot of people come to do research and to look at animals and to like look and see what other people are owning. Um, so I feel like iguanas just aren't talked about here on YouTube. They're not seen that commonly on YouTube. People don't talk about the care on YouTube. People don't talk about <laughs> how, what really goes into owning an iguana. So my main goal when I started my YouTube channel was to talk more about iguanas because I went through so much with Arcadius and his metabolic bone disease and I'd hate for more iguanas to have to go through what he went through and the sad part is a lot of them do and a lot of them don't survive. So that's really what made me start YouTube. And what species of isopod do you like the most? Um, so my favorite all time is probably the clown isopods but those are a little more pricey and I don't really have any pricey isopods yet because I wanted to make sure that I had good luck with the ones that I already have. I wanted to make sure that I could breed them, that my setups worked, that I was on the right track before I invested 
and an isopod that was more expensive. So Michaela Petrello asks, what are my top three dream reptiles? And that one is easy, peasy, lemon, squeezy. So that is a sailfin dragon, a blue tree monitor, and a San Francisco garter snake. I absolutely love San Francisco garter snakes. And I mean, those other lizards I absolutely love, um, but one, you need the room for them, and two, you need the money for them. So I don't know if they're things that I will ever own, but I would really like to. Had you asked me this a couple months ago, I would have said chameleon also, but now I own a chameleon, so I can take that off of my dream reptile list. So reptiles and more, Darnell Gray asks, were you nervous when you started making videos? And if so, how did you get over it? So I don't wanna say I was like super nervous. It was more just uncomfortable um, because I do have a dual major with digital media arts, um, specifically graphic design. And I was used to being behind the camera, behind the computer, doing the editing and all the fun, like artsy fartsy stuff. I was never the one in front of the lens. So that kind of made me uncomfortable. But um, after doing it for a little while, um, it really, I really just realized how fun it was. I was able to connect with a lot of great people. Um, and what really got me over and helped me to really just keep going with it was that I, had a reason for starting my YouTube channel and a purpose for it, which was talking about iguanas. And it was something that I was passionate about and I really wanted to do. So that really helped me just keep going with it because I wanted to talk to people about it. Kelly Nicole asks, what's your, been your hardest reptile to own? I don't really consider them hard. Um, it's probably because my first reptile that was legit on, legitimately mine was Arcadius, my iguana. And he was such a handful that everyone after him just seemed super easy. But now that I've had our case for a while, like, I don't consider him hard. I guess for the average person, he would be considered hard. So I'd have to say Arcadius. Um, even though for me, he's really not. I don't really know who I would consider my hardest reptile, honestly. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe just Arcadius because he's kind of needy. Um, Els Reptiles asks, are there any animals that you wish your zoo had? Um, I'm not sure if you're talking about like my personal zoo or if we're talking about like the zoo that I work at. We're going to go with the zoo that I work at just because I've talked about like what animals I want and what my dream animals would be. Um, I wish my zoo had meerkats because I love meerkats and also more lizards. Um, we don't really have much in the way of lizards, especially big lizards. So I really wish that we had more lizards. Monitors. Uh, Komodo dragon, um, something like that. Both Reptile Mother and Morgan Buellman asks about taking photos of their animals. Um, as asked, how do you do photo shoots with your baby so well? I want to try doing more photo shoots and need advice from an expert. Thank you so much. I mean, I don't consider myself an expert, but I, uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so, I just use my DSLR. I've played with the settings until I found something that I like. You know, I've, I've Googled like how cameras work and just kind of got a handle on the settings on camera so I can shoot in manual. Nine times out of 10, I shoot on automatic. Um, but I do use my DSLR. Um, sometimes I'll use my camera, but if I wanna be able to blow it up or make it look really nice, I use my DSLR. And I always try to use natural lighting and shoot with like a window behind me or to the side of me so that there is natural light shining down on the animal. Um, and then I use, honestly, I just use like cardstock, not cardstock, but like um, poster board. I use poster board for backdrops if I want just like a nice white backdrop. I have a kind of light wood backdrop um, that's just poster board from Michaels. So that's kind of a, my, my secret when it comes to taking pictures of my animals for like holiday photos. Um, Abby Lafferty asks, what wild animal do you want to own if you could own any morals aside? Um, probably red panda uh, because they are super cute and they look super fluffy and I love red pandas. Corbin's Reptile CR asks, would you ever get an Argentine black and white tegu or a savannah monitor? So a couple months ago, I was actually supposed to adopt a savannah monitor, um, but I, decided 
very last minute, but I made this decision that Savannah monitors really are not for me. Um, I can't at the moment provide for a Savannah monitor the way that one needs to be provided for. I was suspicious that that one's probably stunted and had other health issues, but without knowing for sure, I could have ended up with a full size Savannah monitor. Um, and that was just something that I did not have the room for. I just, I realized that was not something that I could do at the moment. Um, so since then I've realized that Savannah monitors aren't really something that I want. Um, but a Tegu, I would absolutely love, like I love big lizards. They are my favorite. Where are you going? I just lost her behind a pillow. Phoenix, we're trying to do a Q&A. Come here. I would love a Tegu. We have two at the zoo. I've got to meet them and hang out with them the other day. And I, I love Tegus. I do. So I would love a Tegu. Okay, she's getting kind of antsy. So I'm going to go put her away. I'll be right back. Melissa Lay asks, regarding your boa, did you want a larger boa right away for your educational programs? Or did you consider getting a young boa? So I was looking for a big boa. I've been looking for a while. I thought I wanted a red tail boa. And then I found out that I actually wanted a Dumeril's boa. So I've actually been looking for a couple months for big boa. Um, but especially for my education programs, because all of my snakes are either colubrids or babies. So I didn't really have a big snake and I was getting huge turnouts for these programs. So I felt like I needed to have something that was like big and impressive. Um, but it was also something like I really wanted. I wanted a big snake. You know, I've had babies, I've had colubrids. I wanted the next step. I wanted the next size. I wanted something big. Um, so that was something I was looking for. I wanted one that was that was big. And I mean, Kronk is by no means like an adult. He's like two years old. So he's he's still young. <laughs> he's just really big. <laughs> Stephanie Corbosiero asks, what is your favorite thing to do in your spare time? Um, something's easy, figure skating. Um, I love to skate. I've skated my whole life. Alex Enright asks if you could work at any animal conservation place or zoo, which one would be your dream to work at? Um, either Riverbank Zoo or the Memphis Zoo. Um, or a reptile zoo, but I've only been to one. So I can't really speak on behalf of the others, but um, I would love to work at the Riverbank Zoo or the Memphis Zoo. Chris Reinhardt asks, why don't I have a tortoise? Because I don't live in a house and I live where it's winter most of the year. Um, I would love to have a tortoise, so it's something I definitely want in the future. Um, so if you guys stick around for a couple of years, you will probably eventually see a tortoise on this channel. Cooper Slocum asks, what plant would you recommend that is like a tree, um, but it's a plant for a small chameleon or arboreal reptiles? If you're looking for a plant that is more tree-like, I suggest looking into some Dracinias. Um, that is the tree-like one that I have in Eugene's enclosure. Um, so look into those. There's a couple different kinds though, so make sure the kind that you're looking at is reptile safe. I mean, a quick Google search or search on Facebook or something, um, you'll be able to figure that out. But both Percy and Eugene both have Dracinias in their enclosures. They both have different kinds of Dracinias, but they both have Dracinias. And last but not least is my question from Wally or Supreme Gecko. And he asks, who is your go-to person or website for reptile questions? Um, so this kind of depends on the reptile. So if I have iguana questions or something to do with iguanas, I usually go to JJ's Reptiles, or as you guys may know her as Jordan, um, or I look to Robin from Ontario Iguanas. So those are kind of the two people I really look to when it comes to iguanas. I mean, I always talk to May or Medusa. Um, you guys may be following her on YouTube. If you're not, you should. Um, but I talk to her a lot just because we kind of run a lot of things by each other, talk to each other a lot about certain things, um, just getting each other's opinions. So I just talk to her a lot about a lot of things. Um, and I mean, websites, I always, always, always go to Rectifiles. Rectifiles is, I think, one of the best websites when it comes to care guides. Um, so if you guys haven't checked out Rectifiles, definitely check them out. Um, and actually, Animals at Home just did a podcast interviewing Rectifiles, so definitely check that out too. It was, oh my gosh, so amazing to listen to. 
She's a breath of fresh air in the reptile community. I couldn't agree more with everything she said. So it just made me love her site even more. Um, so Reptophiles is definitely a website that I will always, always go to first when I'm looking at a new animal or trying to find a care guide. I always start out going to her site. All right, the moment everyone has been waiting for, the winners of the giveaway. So I'm gonna start with prize one. Prize one was the $30 Pangea gift card. So that goes to Alexa Weiss. So congratulations, Alexa. I will be going back to my 1K announcement video and commenting on your question, letting you know that you won. So all you have to do is contact me with your email so that I can have the gift card emailed to you and you guys, and you can use it as you wish. So congratulations. And then the winner of the SandCloud gift card, which was a $25 gift card, is Chelsea Brandt. So congratulations, Chelsea, on winning the SandCloud gift card. Again, just like for Alexa, I will go back to the last video, comment on your question, letting you know that you won. And then all you have to do is contact me with your email so I can have the gift card emailed to you. So congratulations to our two winners. Again, thank you everybody for subscribing and for your questions. I can't even believe how many questions I got. I wasn't even able to answer all of them. And just thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss more videos, upcoming videos, if you aren't already subscribed. Um, and if you are, thank you so much. And we'll see you for the next video.